let's move on now to our next speaker, who is not really uh, one speaker, but rather two speakers. Uh, and they will introduce us to the world of circular procurement, uh, public circular procurement, that is, um, and, and how the public sector can start doing it right from the beginning by procuring the right stuff from the beginning or even services. So we have Sven Olof Rydin, uh, who is a senior specialist at IVL, the Swedish Environmental Research Institute. And we also have Martina Tuchel, who is a procurement officer at CISA uh, and have tried out circular procurement in real life. So welcome and uh, go ahead Sven Olof. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me here and giving me the possibility to talk about uh, Circular procurement, which I refer to as a new procurement landscape. I'm going to focus on criteria for circular procurement. And I indeed would say that do it right from the beginning is to make use of the proper criteria. Otherwise you may get lost even though you have good ambitions to start with. Well, let me explain what I mean with, uh, with uh, a new landscape. And um, the, I would say, environmentally adapted or sustainable procurement, I could say it's the present situation for the time being. It's typically based on a linear material flow. And in fact, the existing legislation we have today is based on, on a linear material flow. Usually you go straight to prepare your procurement document once you find out that you will buy something. Now we enter a new, I would say, concept and era in the circular procurement. At the lower part of this illustration, based on the circular material flow, and I would say to a large extent, this is influenced by customer and market expectations and not from legislation and support from central uh, organizations. So this is, I would say, you focus much more on formulating the proper requirement after you have looked through your needs analysis and your market analysis, for instance, once you may find out that you might not even have to buy something or you might have to hire something or, or you couldn't find the supplier. So that is why this initial steps is nothing that you, I would say, use in the traditional way. But this is, in fact, the main concept for why we need a, a, a new concept for public procurement. So that is why I call it the new landscape. And I would say that I will present some of the ongoing results from resource projects. I've been uh, involved and are still involved in a number of, uh, of, of projects. And if you can see the, what I call resource one, two, and three, these are interlinked projects starting one by one based on a specific form of assignments. Uh, we work with procurement criteria and also circular procurement in practice because we need to look at what are the concerns and the needs from a market point of view. This is important. And we also have one project with a Swedish model for circular procurement, which is based on a traditional call for projects and it will end as you see in the mid 22, which is a little bit more than a year ahead. So, we, in one of our projects, we were expected to make use of international experiences. And we indeed found this in Belgium and the Netherlands. They have been very successful in working with circular procurement, all from the very top, from the government until the very end, the very small suppliers. So of course, we're a little bit envious because that seems to be a very good uh, approach, but we possibly need to do it otherwise in, in uh, Sweden. It is called the Green Deal. But um, don't forget, the Green Deal is not the Green Deal you possibly hear about today from the EU. But honestly, this was called the Green Deal from, from the very beginning. They presented this matrix, which we found very useful. And you can see that it started to, to separate the different types of actions. In the front line on top, you can see you can reduce the total amount, you could reduce the amount of virgin inputs, you can extend the product lifetime, maximize the use of uh, re reusable or recyclability of materials, et cetera, et cetera. But underneath this, you will find a lot of different alternatives. If you look at them and go through them, you will find that some of them are indeed overlapping. 
So this is something we need to develop much further with regard to criteria setting. So we found out what would be the next step from here. And I should say that this matrix, uh, which we presented in a research report was taken directly from the National Agency for Public Procurement. They found it useful as well. And you can find this matrix in an open, uh, just recently opened website from uh, the National Agency for Public Procurement. But we thought we need to go a little bit more to find the proper um, uh, criteria. So the first finding we, we, we uh, saw is that you possibly need to divide or you will have to see the procurement activity as positioned right in the middle between upstream and downstream processes. And this is important because it leads to shared responsibility between procurers and suppliers. So if you, for instance, look upstream, you can have to, you may have to ask for a guarantee for the lifetime of a product or a certain percent of reduced materials that you can ask for. And if you look at the downseed, you as a user, you have to secure the necessary maintenance or repair or even set up uh, collection sites for materials and products for reuse and recycling. So I would say this is a shared responsibility and all these interconnected links has to function Otherwise it won't work in practice. So my last uh, illustration would be uh, what type of approach did we found uh, necessary to step to stay, take at the next step now to find the exact target uh, criteria. So we grouped them in a life cycle perspective. We found out going through all the uh, literature we can find 19 different types of activities and we grouped them and listed them as you can see in the table. Half of them is more or less linked to upstream processes where you can ask for a, a supplier to provide it or but you also have downstream uh, activities which you in your community or wherever you are you have to see to that it works otherwise you will as I mentioned probably get lost. So this will also reflect on the way you can use and make find your specific target uh, criteria. And we tried, started to do that in this table you can see on the right hand side. We have found seven different product groups. Uh, you can find um, building materials, transports, IT telecom, textile furnitures. You can find food, healthcare and plastics. So we found uh, quite a number of, of criteria looking through the literature and listened to the discussions we've had in these projects in, 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 uh, in, within resource. And we also found this to be in, found them to be best handled in a database which we are working with uh, right now. I should also say that we didn't find anything of use in the transport sector. So we have, developed a calculation model for different types of vehicles, fuel consumption, uh, transport routes, for instance, so we can calculate the final logistic solution for uh, the final amount of, of climate impact. So we are working uh, to, to make this even more uh, filled up with crosses. We have uh, 140 criteria out now collected for seven product groups. And we hope that once we will uh, finalize the research project, this will be a more complete version uh, 2.0. I should also say that we call it the criteria cleave it, which would be the criteria leap 1.0. So I think this is one way of at least getting the people to find the right specific target purpose for the, the specific solution they wanted to be used for. Thank you. Really good. Thanks a lot, Sven Olof. Uh, since this is a shared session, I think we just move on uh, directly to uh, Martina. If you can share your screen uh, with us, and we can have some questions afterwards. Yes. There we go. Um... Hello, um, I've been invited here today um, to talk a little bit about the circular procurement I did um, about exactly a year ago um, in 2020. And it was a result of the participation in the resource circular project group. Um, and just to walk you through it shortly, 
I work for a company called SUSA. It's based and owned by 14 municipalities in uh, southern Sweden um, that handles and treats its inhabitants' uh, household waste, but also some industrial waste. And um, my employer consider waste to be a resource that should, as far as possible, um, be reused and uh, recycled. Um, so what kind of procurement did we do? Um, so essentially, when we signed up for the resource project, um, we did an inventory um, to see where to begin. And uh, luckily, our marketing department already started looking into a circular solution for our um, collected gypsum waste, mainly consisting of uh, plaster boards handed in by businesses and private individuals at our recycling stations. And um, well, the total ex extent is about 5,000 metric tons a year. And uh, well, to notice as well, um, the current solution we had for handling the gypsum waste was classified as recycling. So how did it go? Um, well, um, this was my first circular procurement and um, it went rather well. Uh, we had five different senders, whereas four out of the five were qualified for further evaluation. And um, there was a vast range in the pricing and um, in the end, the circular supplier ended up being a bit more pricey um, than the previous solution we had. And um, which obstacles did we encounter and how did we go about it? Um, well, the main issue I encountered was that our strategic agenda said one thing and our yearly budget said another meaning that we did not make room for any more expensive circular solutions in our 2020 budgets. And uh, the degree of anchoring within the own company what just wasn't good enough. And um, well, since we wanted to move the hierarchy but didn't set aside the budget for it, um, not saying that all circular solutions would be more expensive, but um, in this case, the early market research implied so. So um, by raising the question, what was more important, a circular use for the gypsum waste or staying within the budget? Uh, I got different answers depending on, uh, well, from different departments within the company, of course. Um, but in the end, uh, you see who won, we got the circular solution. So what have we learned from the, for future circular procurements? Well, um, we certainly learned that we need to anchor the agenda, the budget, and to establish the conversation within the organization and uh, with the intended markets at an early stage. Um, all to set the correct budgets, make room for budgets, and to ensure that uh, you're all working towards the same goals and aspirations. And words of encouragement or tips and tricks for other fellow circular procurers. Um, well, create networks is, is a good start, um, both within your own organization, but also with uh, other fellow, fellow peers and suppliers. And last but not least, patience. Patience, patience, patience. Um, some need to think longer than others uh, and are a bit foreign to changes. An example, the solution we already got works, so the supply is great, um, the cost is, is low, and so on, so on, and so on. Um, but that need must not be the, the, the one that decides. Um, and um, can the market meet our needs? Um, if not, how can we make it work with both the market, um, but still they get a solution that is sufficient to us? Um, so patience. And uh, with those last words, I'd like to say thank you for listening. Thank you very much, both uh, Sven Olof and uh, Martina. We actually need to move on uh, in the session here, but but Martina, you, you mentioned here that that uh, you sort of won here, you, you, the 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 circular alternative won. What would happen? Would would have happened uh, if you didn't win? Well, then we would go back to the um, recycling solution, not meaning in the circular solution because it was more, uh, less expensive. Okay, uh, and, and, and that solution more specifically, what would that be putting it on landfill or? Yeah, landfill. Yeah. 